Hello there and welcome to the Bicycle Diaries. It's been a bit of a tough week on the bike already this week. Uh, if you were watching last week's vlog, you'll know that on Sunday I went out and did a fairly long ride, so it was 50 kilometres uh, with two fairly big climbs in there. And although I tried to keep my heart rate down between 70 and 80% of my maximum, um, it was still pretty tough. Basically, my legs got fried on both of the climbs. And then on Monday, I went out and did my usual spinning class at the gym, and that was also pretty tough. Um, now, it, in light of Sunday's ride, I thought I would take it easy, but uh, typical me, the red mist kind of came up once I sat on the bike, the music was blaring out, so I just gave it everything I got. And, uh, you know, my legs were really tired. There was a lot of climbing involved in the class. My heart rate was up about 80, 85 percent, and it was pretty tough. And then yesterday, uh, I did the usual uh, Jolly Good Velo uh, meetup and I got together with uh, Greg McMahon and Gareth Chamberlain and we rode around London. Um, unfortunately, uh, Gareth got dropped fairly quickly. Um, I think there was something to do with trainers or um, you know his smart trainer was putting too much pressure or something along those lines and basically Greg and I just rode around London and again I thought I was going to take things nice and easy but I was also trying to keep up with Greg uh, and uh, put a bit more effort in than I was actually planning on doing uh, and then towards the end of the ride he just sort of shot off uh, and left me standing basically so um, well done Greg it was actually great fun riding with you um, hopefully I can keep up next time As you can see, it's an absolutely stunning day here today, so um, I can't resist it. So I'm just going to go out and do a quick 30k ride on the bike. Today's route is my classic Buns, Bent and Ho. So just a quick recap, that's, uh, that's a 30 kilometre route. Uh, a couple of climbs in there uh, with about 300 metres of climbing all told I would say. Um, as you can see the weather is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's actually the warmest February on record. Uh, and I don't know if that's down to global warming or what but um, it's actually about 14 degrees at the moment which is probably about three or four degrees higher than it should be uh, but there's no complaints from me I'm absolutely loving it because it means I can get out uh, and ride the bike in this glorious weather despite uh, the weather being so warm I am still in my winter kit so I've got my long sleeve jersey on underneath that I've got a short sleeve jersey and the only concession I've made today is not wearing the long bottoms I've just got a pair of tights on underneath my normal bib shorts so that should keep me nice and warm if not too warm went out on Sunday uh, I saw loads of people out in short kits so short shorts and short sleeve jerseys and although the weather is uh, so warm today I could probably 
get away with short shorts. I don't think I'm brave enough to go short sleeved jersey just yet. The last time I did this route was back uh, just after Christmas, uh, just before New Year I believe, and I actually struggled. Had a bit of the bonk, um, and I decided to cut it short. But today I'm feeling pretty good, despite having tired legs. Uh, yeah, uh, it's all going well. Swifting, unlike uh, proper road riding, is just one long constant effort. So you set your cadence, set your heart rate, and that's it. You do that for 45 minutes. And obviously, when you're out on the road, you've got undulations and uphills and downhills, and you're changing your cadence constantly. But it's very helpful to kind of think of that or have that uh, Zwift mentality when you're on a climb on the road. You kind of want to set your cadence and then just stick to it. And that's what I'm going to try and do on the first of the two climbs today. Um, but obviously I'm not going to push it quite as hard as I would have done had I been on Zwift. Also helps to regulate your breathing. Well, I rode up there a lot harder than I intend to. I just wanted to tick away up there, but uh, no, the red mist came up again. Uh, and I just thought, no, I'm gonna go for it. So consequently, my legs are quite tired again, but uh, I'm glad I did the climb. Thinking a bit further ahead to the Isle of Wight randomly, the, uh, the big elephant in the room, of course, is the power to weight ratio. So in addition to actually just getting stronger up the climbs, so increasing the power side of that ratio i also need to pay a bit of attention or quite a bit of attention actually to the weight side of that and uh, with that in mind i am going to try and lose a bit of weight uh, to help me up the hills on the isle of wight just about to do the climb up to the batten ball from the village of hambledon about three kilometers average gradient of about four percent uh, I can't see me doing it particularly fast today but uh, I have got this climb in its entirety on the channel and I think I even PR'd that day so you can look that up and watch me climb it in real time and do it quite fast as well So that's today's second and final climb over and done with. Uh, it's just descending into the village of Clanfield now. Uh, and then the, uh, the seven kilometer slightly downhill stretch home.
be downhill for seven kilometers, but of course the wind is against me. That's me home. Cue the 80s music. With this being my final vlog for February, let's just go over a few numbers. This month I've cycled 448 kilometres or 278 miles which brings me up to a grand total for the year so far of 975 kilometers or 606 miles. Let's see what March brings. Hopefully it's on to bigger and better things.